Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick unboxing of the new ECX circuit. This is the 4x4 version that ECX just released. They have released two other cars. The other one would be the Ruckus 4x4 and the Torment 4x4. Neither one of those are available just yet, but they did have this one available. And this is actually the kit that I did want to get. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. We'll see about some of the specifications for it as well um, because I know that they said it did have 2.8 inch wheels um, and I believe even mod one gear so you guys bear with me one second while I get this top off okay with the top off it does seem to be the same normal packing that they do with their trucks they're packed up pretty good on most of their cars uh, let's go ahead and get this out the way Get the car kit over here, bag of stuff, and looks like the remote and some other stuff right there. So let's just go ahead, get that out the way real quick. What do we have here? Oh, batteries. It does look like they have changed their AA brand, um, which is good because the other ones were okay. I mean, they didn't last too long, but... To be uh, everything you need in one package is actually good. They do include cool another binding cord if you wanted to bind other receivers to the radio that you currently have. And they do have this wrench here. Um, not too sure what that's for. That may be for actually tightening up the slipper clutch because this one does come with the slipper clutch, I believe, from what I saw some from some of the images of it as well. So. That and instructions are in this bag right here. Put that away. The radio is what they've been including in a lot of their kits. It's the DX2E, I believe. Haven't had one of these in quite some time. Try to get this open. Yeah, which this is a pretty good radio. It's not horrible or anything. Um, it does have some of your basic trim features there and some of the um, throttle and servo reversing on the top of it. Also, as far as a binding switch there. And of course, it does use four double A's. Um, and according to what I was seeing in some of the specs, this can use the AVC or active vehicle control for this particular model as well. If you guys wanted to upgrade to that. Let's see what's in this little box here. It's probably just, yeah, a charger. Yeah, it's just a charger. They actually started including a better charger. This is probably still the same one amp. Oh, no, it's actually two amps, which is pretty good. Probably get this battery charged in about an hour or so. So we'll just, like everything else, put all that to the side. And let's look at the truck. Actually, they did change the color scheme of it, which I kind of do like the orange a little bit on it. One thing I did notice is that it does not have a bumper, um, which probably wouldn't be too bad to go ahead and maybe get a bumper and get an RPM bumper and maybe drill some holes into the bumper so that can actually fit on here. So you can have a bumper to protect this front a little bit more. But um, suspension on it. Suspension feels fine. It doesn't feel too stiff and it doesn't feel too soft. So we don't have to worry about that bottoming out. The body is the same as the new series of circuits they had actually been releasing, which I'm pretty much fine with that. But like I said, I do kind of like the color scheme of it as well. Let's take a look at this body off and see what we got here. So they do go ahead, install the battery. I believe the battery is a six cell and not a seven. So I believe the Torment and the Ruckus actually come with a seven cell. And this one comes with a six cell nickel metal hydride. But I do believe they updated it. Yeah, to a 2400 milliamp instead of the 1800s they were including with it. Yep, 2400. Um, this should have plenty of room to fit even some hard case lipos because it does seem like this does adjust some 
Yeah, and I don't know if you guys can actually see that. Uh, let's see if I can turn my flash on. This does have holes on the side to where you can adjust the height of your battery tray. So good job there. Um, so you can put different size light poles in it, which is good. I'll just go ahead and leave this light on. Hopefully it's not too troublesome. The shocks are plastic, plastic body, but they do have an aluminum screw cap here on top, which would be good. It'll keep it from breaking. They are not threaded body shocks. They do use these shock spacers, but the suspension, like I said, seems to be pretty good. It doesn't seem to be horrible or anything. The kit does come with full ball bearings in it, which is always a plus. Oh, uh, let's see the motor. They are doing something different here. As you can see, if that focuses in, this is a 15 turn 540 motor. Most kits nowadays that do come with the ready to run motor, it is a 12 turn. I know my um, Stampede brush version did come with a 12 turn Titan, of course, and that motor is still running pretty good. And I also have a um, Helion 12 turn uh, 550 metric motor. The Helion motor does have stronger magnets than the Traxxas, but I may put that in here to see how their runs were to replace them, but I do have to look at the specs on the speed controller. The kit is waterproof. They did seem to upgrade this on-off switch, which is good because that seems to be more water-resistant or proof than some of the other ones I've seen that have tried to have an on-off switch attached to it. Um, the ESC, I don't know if you guys can see that too well or not in there. It does come with um, something called jumpers on the ESC. I've never actually um, played with this before, but basically to switch from nickel metal to lipo and even to turn the reverse off, you actually, if you guys can see that, can unplug these and see, you unplug this here and you move that up to the next plug there and it actually does something in there to where it either was going to run with the lipo or the nickel metal. This does come in the nickel metal can format. Um, as you can see right there, stock out the box. Um, and then to switch to LiPo, I'm just going to actually have to take this up and move this over one, and then it'll be in a LiPo compatible mode, which is pretty decent. I just want to know what happens if you have a bad crash and you end up losing these. I think in the instruction manual, it did say if these weren't plugged in, it would default to LiPo, but I'd have to double check on that to see. Um, it does come with, I believe they call these the ECE or ECR. I can't remember the connectors for it. I do have a Venom LiPo pack um, that I will be using to run a LiPo battery pack in here. Oh, let's see. What else with the truck? Plastic seems to be pretty good and pretty sturdy. Doesn't seem to be made weak or anything. Oh, ball ends. They are screwed on the top, so uh, hopefully those won't pop loose. I don't think they will. It looks like it's they're in there pretty good. Uh, let's talk about tires and wheels. These are 2.8, which is good. They're just a lower profile, 2.8, probably about the size of a short course tire and wheel, except for it's 2.8, the full diameter of short courses as you come in. It's, I think it's 2.2 or 3 in the center of that, but the compound feels pretty good. It does have foam inserts in there, and it does seem to have a good tread wear, too. I don't think this will wear out anytime soon, especially in brushed mode there. What I am curious about, and I may have to stop the camera and come back, is the gears that are inside here. I'm curious to see if those are actually mod one or the 32 pitch. So if you guys will hold on for a second, let me go get my trusty, trusty screwdriver and get that loose. Okay, that didn't take too long. Uh, my screwdriver did die, so I had to charge the battery back up. But I do have this open. I do want to point out a couple more things as I was unscrewing that and checking this out, is that it does not have, like some of the other ones, um, a plastic covering to cover this to keep any dirt or anything from getting into this center shaft here. But that shaft is aluminum, which is good, and does have bearings throughout there as well. And it looks to be a pretty solid construction there. This spur gear is Mod 1. 
it is not 32 pitch. Um, here is an actual uh, Mod 1 pinion gear. And if you guys can see that, um, it actually fits right on there. Um, the gear mesh is Mod 1. So if you guys go out and start buying uh, pinion gears for this, you will have to pay a couple more bucks because some places do have them to be a little bit more expensive than others. Um, they run anywhere from about 11 to 15, 16 bucks for a Mod 1 pinion gear. But that may actually be a good thing as well because for durability purposes, they won't strip as easy. And future on, you could probably get um, an aluminum or a metal spur gear for that. Um, I'm trying to see if, can't really see what the size of the shaft is on this. If they use the 0.8 millimeter or actually the um, larger shaft to fit those on there. But it does look like the shaft is longer as well. It doesn't have anything in there to... Sorry about that. Just trying to see. Yeah, it seems like it does have a 5 millimeter shaft in there as well, which is good. I mean, I do have some motors that do have a um, 5 millimeter shaft on them, so I can plug that right in. I have to worry about getting the reducer sleeve um, to fit in here. Now, if you do fit another motor in here that does not have a 5 millimeter shaft, you will have to get what's called a reducer sleeve, which actually goes inside here and fits over the 3 millimeter shafts so that these size uh, pinion gears are at least um, 5 millimeter holes here can fit on there. But I can put more on about that a little bit later on. Um, a little bit more about the car. It does come with dog bones. And they do seem to be really thick, which is good. Um, time will tell once I go brushless with this baby and see how it handles up. But these actually seem to be pretty thick. Um, something else I'm actually noticing is this right here. It's almost like, I don't know what that is for. It looks like a stabilizer set that they've included in there. But maybe if you adjust that, it'll help with the suspension or tightening of that. I have to look on that a little bit more to see exactly what that is. But it does seem to be like they've created somewhat of a unique way of keeping these together, too, instead of just depending on um, this part right here to hold the top and lower A arms together. So I have to look a little bit more on that to see what that is. It may be to tighten that up. I remember someone telling me that on the Hyper T, if you actually take a tie strap and tighten that part up on the Hyper T, it'll help it handle a lot better. So they do have that on the front, but they don't have that on the rear, which is fine. Um, Camberlings are not adjustable, which is fine, especially for this type of vehicle and the cost of it. It was $239. Uh, shipped with that and I went ahead and paid a couple extra bucks to get a little bit earlier. It does have Phillip hex screws throughout the whole buggy and let's take a look at the bottom of this real quick. Does seem to be a really hard plastic and it does seem to be constructed pretty well so um, I'm going to go ahead get this battery charged up and give this thing a run stock out the box so you guys can see how this runs and i'll go ahead and also get a lipo ready too and put a video up too with this running with the 2s lipo and i will be going to the track tomorrow so i will be bringing this with me um to the track as well to see how this handles so you guys stay tuned don't forget to like and subscribe if you also want to see more videos like this of me getting some of the newer cars that come out and doing just a quick review, unboxing, and a couple of driving tests. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment.